Hello, everybody. This is Catholic Dad. Uh, let's see. Episode 107, Cain is the uh, original S SJW, social justice warrior. So, um, SJWs, social justice warriors, these people that uh, they point out the, the privileged people in society, the, uh, the rich, the wealthy, the affluent, the uh, intelligentsia, and so on and so forth. And they're always trying to take them down, trying to say that they're privileged or they have some kind of patriarchy or... You name it, social justice warriors, that's who they are. Who was the original SJW? Cain was the original SJW. So think about the Cain and Abel story. You know, Cain was a, a farmer, Abel was a shepherd. And um, so they all worked, they both worked hard, they did their best, they tried to succeed in life. And then so uh, Abel brought his, um, um, his uh, fruits of his labor to the, the father and he said, I'm very pleased with you, you've done great work. Cain brings the fruits of his labor to the father, and he says, no, you're not very good. This isn't acceptable. You didn't do good enough. Okay. So essentially, um, Cain and Abel, they both put their efforts in, but one does well and the other does not. And so how does Cain react to not being as su su successful as Abel? Well, what he does is he invites him out to the field, and he slaughters him dead, kills him. He kills his brother uh, because of envy and um, greed and jealousy and so on and so forth. And so... Cain is the original social, social justice warrior, and I think all social justice warriors should probably meditate upon this because the people that are social justice warriors always talk about their, uh, uh, their virtue, uh, their compassion, their empathy, uh, their love of the downtrodden and, and the dispossessed and disparaged in society. And they're always uh, pretending like uh, their love of those who are down and out is uh, far greater than everybody else's. And, well, I would argue with that. But... Um, Cain, same thing, right? Uh, but he felt completely dispossessed, and he had two ways to deal with it. He had uh, one way to deal with it, say, I'm not as good as the other person, Abel, and I could work harder, I could dedicate my life to it, you know, and I could uh, become the master of my craft and then make my father proud. I could do that, or I can kill him, right? And that's the social justice warrior aspect. I could take him down, and I could take him down. You know, today, you, you people, they take people down, these social justice warriors, they take them down through social media, they take them down through slander, reputation smearing, you name it. They don't kill them. Or do they? Now, you have to think about it. Uh, the communists, who were the communists? The communists were the people, the downtrodden, the proletariat in society that need, wanted to take down the, uh, the bourgeois class of people, you know, the upper, the intelligentsias, the engineers, the uh, educators, uh, the priests, uh, you know, and, and so on and so forth. And so how did they do it? Well, they took them down by putting them in camps, making them work, and uh, potentially killing them. That's how they took them down. But uh, we in America, we don't really have that capacity to do that. And so the social justice warriors are essentially the same as the communists without the power of the communists. That's what they are. And, um, and I guess this is a challenge to the social justice warriors out there. Um, you guys pretend, pretend, and maybe you are. I mean, maybe you have love and empathy of the dispossessed and the disparaged and the poor and the needy in society. Maybe you have, like, true, genuine empathy. But it's not clear to me that your love of the dispossessed in society is greater than your hate of the successful in society. Because when you look at in the last hundred years, the social justice warriors have killed so many successful people that, um, I mean, if their love was empathy, then they would just essentially would say, well, we're going to create tax systems and we're going to like steal all the money from these people of the successful and we're going to give it to the poor and, and that's it. But no, I mean, Eventually, these people rise up and they grind them up in meat grinders, right? And they destroy the wealth. That's what they do. So, really, if you kill the wealth producers and you destroy the wealth producing class of people and you, you persecute them and make it hard on them, then everybody becomes poor. And that makes you happy? Think about that. I mean, Soviet communism, or you know, within the Soviet states, there was equality throughout, like, people, well, there wasn't real equality, but it was a lot more uh, equitable than America equality of outcome, and the social justice warriors should have had their heyday, except everybody is starving and poor, right? And so, did that make you happy? And so, if that makes you happy, like, if you're really happy when you take down the intelligentsia and the wealthy and the affluent, the bourgeois class of people, when you're happy about that, but everybody becomes poor, that tells me that your hate of the successful, the Cain Abel story, right, is greater than your empathy towards the disparaged and dispossessed and the unsuccessful. And that's something that everybody who's a social justice warrior should meditate upon. Because I don't believe the virtue signaling you people do is any more than virtue signaling. 
because you are not the ones in the trenches giving all the charity out, doing all the mission work, uh, trying to help uh, the poor and dispossessed. You're the ones that are trying to create the system of oppression for the wealthy through high taxes and regulatory regimes and so on and so forth. And when they finally get in the way and you finally seize control of their firearms, then you put them in meat grinders and you grind them up. And so this is the whole Cain and Abel story. And, and think about it, people, that Cain had a couple uh, choices to make. He could have been quiet. He could have prayed about it and made himself better. But instead, he wants to take out the person that's doing better than him. That's the original social justice warrior. That's, the, that's what we're seeing in society today, this whole rise of the SJWs, of the, the, the white male patriarchy uh, crowd, or the Black Lives Matter crowd, or, or the Antifa crowd, or these hard left liberal lefts. And, I, and when you're like, oh, just the left, yeah. Yeah, in the, in the last hundred years, the liberal left has ground up more people in meat grinders than in ever anybody else. And so, there you go. And, and when I say liberal left, I mean the hard left. And those are the social justice warriors. And so, so if you are a social justice warrior, I want you to meditate. You know, everybody out there, whether you're from the hard right or the hard left, you all think you're well-intended. You all think you're doing what's right. But do you genuinely love the dispossessed more than you hate the successful? That's the answer you have to answer. And if you genuinely do, then look at the, your actions. I mean, Fidel Castro would have claimed he loved the dispossessed more than he uh, hated the intelligentsia. But Fidel Castro is also the one that said, socialism or death, there are no other options, which by that metric, he hated the intelligentsia and the successful more than he loved the poor and dispossessed. Because he was willing to kill them for it and destroy the wealth, which would have made everybody poorer, and it did. Just look at Cuba. Well, anyway, this is Catholic Dad making you think about it. Please like or subscribe or share with your friends. God bless you all.